Welcome back and thank you for joining us for the second day of the Open Source Strategy Forum 2020. Well, I, I really genuinely wish that we were meeting in, the, in person this week and I'm sure many of you do too and probably my kids who would like me out of the house. I hope that you enjoyed the content yesterday and I'm excited to kick off day two. So just before we get started, uh, a few quick reminders. We welcome and encourage you to engage with the community. We've had some great lively conversations over the Slack channels, and, and there you can chat with other attendees and presenters on really a wide range of topics, maybe related to open source and finance, or maybe related to your pets or food, and really anything that helps engage you with the community. And, and we wanna keep this conversation going. So the Slack channels will stay open for a while. You can carry on having a, the conversations. And we also recommend that you subscribe to our community at finos.org mailing list. And this is just a place where the community provides updates about uh, things that are happening in the foundation. We also hope that you will spread the word through your own networks and social media. And the bigger our community, the more we can do together. And finally, we want everyone to enjoy the event. So please be sure that you follow our code of conduct and treat all of the attendees with respect. You can find the code of conduct in multiple places, including under the information heading at the conference site. And if you encounter any issues or find anything at all concerning, please don't hesitate to contact Trisha Barker or Angela Brown, and you can do this via Slack, direct chat on the conference platform, or even on email. I would also like to give a great big thank you to our sponsors, our leader sponsors, GitLab, IBM, and Red Hat, our contributor sponsor, Tidelift, and our community sponsor, TradeWeb. You know, this wouldn't be possible without you, and attendees, please make sure you stop by their booths, check out what's going on, engage with them in Slack, and we really are very grateful for um, all their support. So, let's kick off with today's keynote. Um, yesterday, Gab spoke briefly about the noteworthy progress that our financial services community has made in adopting open source and the value it brings to all participants, both on the technical and, and business side. And today I'm gonna to focus a little more on how the finance industry can build on that and tackle some big challenges. And by way of introduction, I'm uh, Tasha Ellison, the Chief Operating Officer at Pino. Uh, so this morning, we issued a press release announcing that two new projects have been contributed to the foundation and that we've kicked off an important new initiative. Uh, so the first, uh, the Symphony Java Toolkit, has been contributed by Deutsche Bank. And as adoption of Symphony grows, this is an ideal time to collaborate on tools that address common concerns and workflows. And this suite of libraries really does just that. You know, it's been used in production at Deutsche Bank, and it focuses on delivering client functionality, things like request for quote, building orders, sharing acts information. And these are useful utilities that should be developed once collaboratively, not multiple times across multiple firms. You know, doing it once, that means you have more time to focus on the price that's actually in that RFQ or the customer order for your client, really the value add for your firm. And if you didn't catch yesterday's talk, um, it's worth watching the replay to learn more. We also announced that OpenMama has joined Finos. Now, OpenMama is a vendor neutral cross-platform API that interfaces with a wide variety of message-oriented middleware systems. It provides a simplified way of sharing market data across investment banks, proprietary trading companies, hedge funds, and data providers. And if you've ever done an implementation of a market data feed, you know it can be complicated and take about a lot of time. So, you know, having this common project can help reduce the cost of ownership and the time and, and the time to market for all of the market participants. Uh, now, OpenMama was already open sourced under the Linux Foundation, but when Finos moved to the Linux Foundation, it made sense to join together where we can jointly benefit from the alignment of um, our members and community. So where is this taking us? You know, we're excited about these contributions and they really highlight part of what has been a great year for us. You know, as Gab and Dove mentioned yesterday, We've had a record number of contributions from banks, and this is a strong indicator that financial services is more fully embracing open source. 
you know, with this growing community and ecosystem and this greater comfort with open source practices, the finance industry is in prime position to collaborate on bigger opportunities and innovate the open source way. And, you know, one of the opportunities we see is in reg tech. You know, we think that there's that open source software and standards can really change the way that financial regulation is interpreted, implemented, and supervised. And, and that's why we started the Open Reg Tech Initiative, really to explore and promote opportunities for collaboration between financial, financial institutions, technology firms, service providers, and regulators. Um, I co-lead this initiative for Finos alongside my, con my colleague, Aitana Miol, and we're thrilled with the interested interest that we've had so far from all of these different market participants. You know, and as a result of that interest, our board has approved the creation of a special interest group focused on this topic. Now, before I get into the, the, a bit more about the special interest group, I wanna give you a, a little bit of a sense for just how big of a challenge this is and why it's important. You know, there are a very large number of financial regulators across the globe. And many financial institutions provide services in a large number of markets, and so they need to address the requirements for those many different regulators. And those regulators might all have different models or different approaches to how they deliver and want to receive information related to the regulations. You know, and these regulations can be very lengthy and dense. For example, Dodd-Frank's regulatory definition of swaps, the swaps, is 160 pages long. You know, these many millions of pages of regulation ultimately result in the production of billions of data points. Uh, former Bank of England Governor Mark Carney said last year that the bank can receive 65 billion data points in a single year. And there's a reason for this. You know, financial services is an extremely complex and often nuanced industry covering a huge range of products and services delivered to hundreds of millions and in some case, billions of people. And as you can imagine, with this level of complexity and scale, there's a cost, you know? It's, it's costly, it's expensive to interpret those regulations. One report showed that bank compliance costs jumped more than $50 billion a year after Dodd-Frank. And, and that's before you even get to the implementation. And for each of the regulated entities who has to implement those regulations, there's a technology cost, you know, a systems cost. Uh, LexisNexis recently estimated that 40% of financial crime compliance costs are associated with technology. And then there's the, the expense of making, understanding what all of that data is telling us. You know, but with all of this, it's important that we get regulation and compliance right. Because if we can get it, if we get it wrong, there can be disastrous effects. So with that as a backdrop, I'd like to tell you about our Regulation Innovation SIG, which we announced this morning. This is being led by AIR, the Alliance for Innovative Regulation, and ING. In fact, you can chat with the SIG leads, Ian Hollibred and David Eric, in our Ask the Expert session uh, just after, during the break, just after the, this, the keynotes today. Um, and the goal here is to bring together individuals who are interested in creating open source solutions for regulatory and compliance issues. And we provide a neutral, trusted environment to explore the challenges, identify opportunities, and ultimately build open source projects, standards, tools, models, documentation, reference, reference implementations, really anything that is open but governed that can help. You know, and we recognize that it's important to have representatives and insight from all of the different participants in the industry. So from financial institutions, we need compliance professionals and architects and engineers, and we need regulators at the table too. And you know, there's some great innovative regulators, the FCA, the Bank of England, FINRA, CFPB, who you can hear from later as well. Um, and the tech and advisor community has a huge role to play also. And we need the reg techs, consultants, other foundations, associations. We all need to come together to figure out how we can solve these industry challenges. Um, we had uh, the first, the SIG had its first meeting earlier this week and two items that came up repeatedly were standards and interoperability. You know, we discussed a number of different potential focus areas, 
digital regulatory, digital regulatory reporting, AML, horizon scanning, payments. And these discussions often came back to the importance of standards and interop. And this really underpinning the ability to be successful in making change. You know, so we had a, a great initial conversation. We have lots of directions for future conversations. And you know, we're really looking forward to, to finding some exciting projects to work on together. Uh, if you want to, you can learn more about the FIG and find out how to get involved on our website um, or on our GitHub repo at finos, uh, github.com, Finos Open Reg Tech. And so, we know that this is an, 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 an easy industry challenge to solve. It's hard. It's going to take time and effort of many individuals and many groups, but open source in all of its variations must have a prominent role in how we make it faster, better, and easier to produce, interpret, implement, comply with, and supervise financial regulation. Now, this is just one of the big issues we think open source can help solve for the industry, but we do think it's an important one. So with that, I'll wrap up. You know, we, we have many more projects and initiatives, and there are lots of ways that you can get involved, um, you know, whether that's coding or providing insight, so many different opportunities. So please do reach out. You can reach us on Slack, via email, um, lots of different ways. And, and there are a number of sessions today that touch on different angles of regulation and also a number of other topics. So we're, we're um, pretty excited about our lineup today, including our fantastic keynotes. Uh,